Hello again. Hello, it's Freya and Odin from 59 Degrees of Hope. Thanks for coming back again. Welcome to our fourth in this series. As you can tell, we're not Orkney born. Yeah, but this is our home and we love living here. We're giving you a little bit of Orcadian life and the quiz and of course our little geo-guesser thing. So we want you to guess where we are. And today is a lovely day. It's beautiful today. We're trying to be realistic with the weather. We are, yeah. If it's bad, we go out. If it's yeah. nice, we'll go out. Yeah, we're trying not to just show you it like some kind of Picture beautiful... Picture postcard. Yeah, exactly. Perfect turquoise, blue seas, green fields kind of thing. But, but today is exceptional, isn't it? It is beautiful. It's, it's lovely. lovely. lovely Hopefully day. you can hear the birds. The birds are going crazy today. And yet another location for yep. you to guess. So where are we? So we're trying to give you some clues here. We are somewhere in the Orkney Islands and we want you to guess where. We do. Do we want to give them any more clues as to narrow it down any more? I mean, well, when we say know. Orkney Islands, I mean, do you want to say we're still on the mainland? We're not on the mainland. Well, exactly. We're not on the mainland, <laughs> guys. We're not on the mainland. <laughs> That's all the clue we'll give. Yeah, he's given away a big clue there, but yeah, we're not on the mainland. <laughs> So see if you can guess where we are, and if you win, we will give you a shout-out in the following episode. We certainly shall. Okay, so uh, now it's time to give a big shout-out, uh, big respect, and congratulations to the winner of our last quiz, quiz number three. So uh, the winner was Sue South, who was spot on. It was filmed from the car park on Glimpsome. Uh, looking towards Barrier 3 with the island of Bury behind it. And, uh, yeah, yes. she was bang on there. So, yep, very good. Well spotted. Well spotted. So, uh, yeah, see if you can uh, do just as well with our location this week. There'll be plenty of clues for you spread out in the video. We're going to put a few little clips in here and there. So uh, they'll help you along the way, hopefully. Keep them peeled, as they say. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, this week we're going to bring you a few stories from the Orcadian of the 18th of May. Yes, and then I will be challenging Odin this time in the quiz. Must do better, that's my report. <laughs> Must do better. So at the moment we've done three, I've done two and scored 14 points, yeah. and Odin's done one, scored five, but he was hard done by slash robbed slash... Was it five? I thought it was six. Really? No, it was five, but it was a nice try, <laughs> nice try. Yes, I shall attempt to do better today. Okay, so the first story from the Orcadian. The demand outstrips donations as more families turn to food bank. Yeah, this just goes to show that we are not alone up here. It's not like we're in some little perfect bubble. There's lots of people up here struggling in this cost of living crisis as well. Yeah, it says it's been brought into sharp focus as the charity has never been busier. There are individuals and families in Orkney who, despite the fact they're in work, are struggling to afford to eat. Yep, there's been a near doubling of food bank demand since 2016. It's just very sad, I think, and some of the people who are worst hit are the people who are in jobs, so they're in work, but they're on low incomes. Mm. So they're, they're earning, but they're not earning enough to keep themselves and their families, so they're having to get help from food banks. Because, um, of course, if you're working, you don't get the benefits. Um, so, yeah, it's harsh, I think. Orkney's increase in demand has outstripped the Scottish average at 35%. Mm. And they said this is the busiest year they've had. Very sad. Mm. But it's fantastic that, that people do this. I think it's amazing, the volunteers and people who help out. Fair play to them all. OK, so the next one then, we are talking about, well, the Orcadian itself here. It's been shortlisted for Weekly Newspaper of the Year, which is uh, fantastic. It's Scotland's Weekly Newspaper of the Year um, at the Scottish Press Awards. So, yeah, that's really cool, I think, because they are a good newspaper, I think. They are a very good newspaper. I think, so we're not too biased, but we shall let people know what the other titles are that they are Oh, gosh, yeah, we must, we must be biased. Uh, they're up against the Strathspey and Badenoch Herald. Largs and Millport Weekly News. Yep, Dunfermline Press and the East Lothian Courier. Very good. Mm. I think it's in impressive. So uh, even if they don't win, well done to the Orcadian. And the Orcadian sub-editor and their chief reporter are also vying for the Local Reporter of the Year Award. Oh, so, very impressive. Um, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yep. And next, we're coming on to the fantastic naming ceremony. Yeah, this is very important for, for me personally. Yes, you should. You me should. personally. No, no, you carry on. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a <laughs> fantastic naming ceremony for Freya. Yeah, for Freya. Just for me. Just for me. It's not really for me, of course. <laughs> Fun, fantastic, awesome and amazing. 
That's how two young girls summed up the official naming ceremony of their namesake vessel, Freya of Scapa. Yeah, now, as you may or may not know, Scapa is this enormous natural harbour which is in the middle-ish of the Orkney Islands, um, kind of just below mainland and next to South Ronaldsea where we live. And um, it's extremely famous, obviously, for its role in two world wars. So, Freya of Scapa. But also, it goes on to say, it's been a full steam ahead for Freya of Scapa since she began work at the end of October 2022, alongside Odin of Scapa. <gasps> no way! That's what it says. Really? And see, I hadn't read all of and this. Thor of Scapa. Ah, oh, see, we haven't so, got a Thor yet. It's just Odin and Freya. There we go, you see, we should have been in that <laughs> photograph. <laughs> Fantastic photo. Okay, so our next one then, the Pentalina. Now we've reported on this that we've had a bit of drama up here with the poor Pentalina who was grounded uh, at the harbour and uh, was damaged. They had to rescue the people on board. Nobody was injured or anything, but it's a big disaster for the um, locally owned company who run it. It's now finally bound for Birkenhead Dry Dock. Um, so it's going there to be fixed, and we will see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be uh, out of action until at least Friday, May the 26th. The operators had announced that services will be suspended up to and including Sunday, May the 21st. Uh, but this has now been been extended, yet following uh, her grounding in St Margaret's Hope, which was in April. Better safe than sorry. Better. And of course, at the moment, we've got Northlink, the other ferry service up here, um, who run from Scrabster to Stromness. And they are having to put on extra sailings. I think they've even put on a midnight sailing to try to cover for the Background. all the people who can't come across on the, the one that the Pentalina covers, which right. goes from... Gills Bay. Gills Bay. That's it. I couldn't remember the name for a second. Gills Bay to St Margaret's Hope. Uh, and um, the, the, the ferry that we would, norm, would normally be used, the MV Alfred, mm. has begun its service on the Calmac on the Androsen Aran route. Yeah. So it's been sort of subcontracted elsewhere when we really need it now. We really need it now. <laughs> yes, there's a certain amount of sods law going on there, but just a bit of uh, paper crinkling here by Odin, expertly done. I think so. Okay, next up we have a story regarding the barriers, which are the causeway that connect the southern islands. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they've been recognised with a new plaque. For nearly eight decades, they have connected communities. And it's the unveiling of a National Transport Trust Red Wheels plaque. Yeah. Uh, it was unveiled last Friday, May the 12th. And yep. it was the 78th anniversary of the official opening of the barriers in 1945. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if you're not sure about the barriers, look them up. They're called the Churchill Barriers. There's a whole Wikipedia page about them and no doubt lots of other articles. Orkney.com has a good article about them. They were constructed during the Second World War after one of the German U-boats came and, yeah, it was U-boat 47. Um, it entered Scapa Flow in, on October the 14th, 1939 and uh, sank HMS Royal Oak. There were over 830 people killed that night. Uh, it was an absolutely terrible, terrible loss. And uh, every year, in a really touching ceremony, divers go down to the wreck, which is underneath the surface of Scapa Flow, um, upside down I think and uh, they go down to the wreck and they hoist the flag there in memory of mm. the boat and its crew who were lost and it's a designated war grave site yeah the barriers were erected so that no other U-boats could get through to the fleet because Scapa Flow was used That's as right. a, a harbour yeah so the, the plan was to protect the flow which was as you say the strategic and naval base of the home fleet by blocking the eastern approaches between four of the South Isles Lambholm, Glimpsholm, Bury and South Ronaldsay they're not doing that duty today, but they're still there, yep. allowing us to get to and fro. Yeah, they're a fantastic link now for those those islands, because uh, South Ronald says the bigger one, but the others are smaller and they come in between. And that link enables everybody to get across. And of course, it means that the Pentalina ferry, people can come across on the Pentalina, drive up, go across the barriers. Plus, of course, they look amazing. We do. I think two of the barriers are grade one listed as protected monuments. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very cool. But yeah, go and look them up. They're extremely impressive things. Built by Italian prisoners of war and they were completed ironically in 1945, May 1945, just before VE Day, just before the end of the war. Okay, we are now moving on to the archives. I love the archives. We, we do a bit of looking back in history. Yeah, we're going back. Uh, initially this year, we're going back to 1923. 100 years ago, basically, we're going back, guys. 
There's a story mentioning about some deck cargo that was lost on the Stronse Traders Stormy Passage. The SS Moorside left Peterhead on the Thursday afternoon for Stronse with a cargo of stock for Mr Wood's Stronse Curing Station. But unfortunately, when they set off, it was clean and calm. But then it soon changed and a fresh breeze sprang up from the south-southeast, which does sound not good. Uh, and at 10.30 it ran into a hurricane from the northeast, and the gale was very strong throughout the night uh, and unfortunately the stanchions broke and the cargo deck was lost uh, with about a thousand barrels being lost overboard. I love the, uh, the different terms. A fresh breeze. Okay, so yeah, fresh breeze which caused problems. And it's hurricane <laughs> and gales. So yeah, it just goes to show that um, for all time the waters around the island have been very risky. Hats off to all those fishermen out there and anybody who takes a boat out into these waters because uh, it can be very dicey and the weather can change quickly. Okay, so now our next one, I'm going to do a bit of paper rustling myself now just to take over. Odin's the main paper rustler. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is a nice story. This was from 1998, 25 years ago. Okay, so this can't be just me. How old does that make you feel? Very old. Very old. The fact that this is in the archives, 25 <laughs> years ago, 1998. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> So, Orkney's oldest car is up for sale. The oldest surviving car, a 1911 Model T Ford, and its owner, Mr. Ron Marrick. Now, I, I'm betting Was he's he up not for sale? up for sale. No, no I don't no. think so. Um, so, they could be parting company in the near future. The veteran vehicle is now up for sale. Mr. Marrick bought BS65 in Orkney 10 years ago, but it was in poor shape, little of it remaining except the engine. He has carefully restored it to its original condition, though paying careful attention to all the minor details. He restored it himself, which is really impressive. The engine number was stamped on the block, 53307, reveals how many Model T Fords had been manufactured by May the 1st, 1911, when BS65 was first on the road. Nearly 15 million Model T Fords were made between 1909 and 1927. Mr. Marrick's car is one of the earlier versions with a green finish and brass fittings. He's traced some of the car's history, it was originally from the farm of Haukoy in Holm, and a previous owner included a Kirkwall minister, Reverend William Pitcairn Craig. But does it say what it sold for? No. no. It's up for sale. It no, was it? I wonder what it sold for 25 but years ago. It would be ago. nice if it stayed on the islands, but let's face it, it's a rare and special mm. thing, so who knows. I bet it sold for quite a lot. I'm just doing some um, page turning. I'm, I'm not as good as Odin at this, clearly. And for our last story today, we're going to go to the back page, the sports page. And the Orkney athletes shine at Wick Triathlon. A seven-strong contingent of Orkney athletes made their way over to Caithness to take part in the Wick Mini Triathlon. Uh, It's a mini one. It's raced over the mini distance of a 400-metre pool swim, a 10k cycle and a 3k run. Uh, And that is apparently the shortest triathlon distance that you can do. Still sounds pretty... um, Sounds a lot to me. Still sounds quite hard work. Uh, it's become a popular fixture in the local triathlon calendar. I say it was a near near perfect day. Very nice. Shout out to all those that took part. Yeah, very good. And lovely that they had a good day for it. Because uh, something like a triathlon is hard enough without having the elements against you as well. Mm. So, so, yeah, it's that time. Yeah, draw breath, everybody, because we're going to do the quiz now. So, I am going to be asking Odin the quiz today. Mm-hmm. So, at the moment... I'm feeling confident. Are you? I'm Why? feeling more. I'm feeling more confident than my score last week. Okay. Suggests. Well. I'm. I'm glad you feel confident. You should <laughs> do. Normally you do very well. You. You were absolutely robbed last time. <coughs> right. Okay. Here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. He's braced. He's got his arms folded. Head back. Deep breath in. He's just stretching out a bit now. Just, just limbering up. Moment. Yeah. Just limbering up. Okay. We're ready. All right. So, PD quiz. Number one. Topping out at one thousand three hundred and forty-five meters above sea level. What is the highest mountain in the UK? <laughs> yeah, that's a very good question, isn't it? It's like me with James Herriot last uh, week. You know it. And I then, I then go blank. Um, well, in, in the UK, that must be... I mean, you've got Wales, you've got Snowdon, you've got England. I don't think that... I think it's... I would have to say Ben Nevis. Yes, and you would be correct. That took a while, didn't it? Took a while, but you got there in the end. Okay, number two. Which three-time winner of the London Marathon held the Women's World Marathon record between 2003 and 2019? Three-time winner of the London Marathon. It's Um, difficult with stuff like this, isn't it? Oh, who was that? So many big names. Yeah. I can't think of a name now. I'm going to have to rush you. 
Like you uh, rush me. I do rush you, don't <laughs> I? I do rush you. Um No. No. It's Paula Radcliffe. Yes, of course, that's who I was oh, thinking of. I knew you were thinking of her. Okay, number three. Bulldogs, serotines, and pipistrels are types of which animal? Bats. Yes, there you go. I mean, to be fair, the name pipistrel does kind yeah, of well, give it away. Yeah, that's what gave it away, yeah. yeah. Okay, number four. In Dad's Army, what was Captain Mannering's job? I think he was a bank manager. He was a bank manager. Remember, everybody, you can play along with this as well. <laughs> we hope you're playing along. We hope you're getting them quicker than uh, Odin. No, I wouldn't take much. Okay, number five. Between 1961 and 2004, and then from 2011 onwards, Kenneth Sean Carson was the boyfriend of which toy? Oh, Barbie. Yeah. (laughs) Barbie and Ken. (laughs) If somebody had read that out to me, I'd have no chance because... They're doing it by doing the whole name. Kenneth Sean Carson. I never knew either. You didn't know he had a full name. No, I didn't know either. Okay, number six. What was the winged flying horse of Greek mythology called? Pegasus. He was indeed Pegasus. He's easy this week. It's only easy if you know the answer. Um, Number seven. In 1967, which radio station was renamed BBC Radio 4? BBC Radio 4. Rename it wouldn't be one of the pirate ones. Radio station. I don't think it would be one of the pirate ones. It would be something, something like the the home service. Yeah, it was the home was service. It? Yeah. Jeez. Oh my oh, God, that, took that you one a while. Out the bag, I, I? I'm going to have to hurry you up on the answer, <laughs> okay, I'm afraid. Okay. You're taking too long. I do. Okay. You do chase me up. <laughs> okay. Um, number eight. Which fictional horse lived in the stables at Birtwick Hall? I have absolutely no idea. A f- well, I've already done Pegasus. I presume that was a, <laughs> that was a fictional horse, wasn't it? Pegasus was a um, mythical horse. Only, mythical horse. The only other fictional <laughs> horse that comes to my mind at the moment is Black Beauty. Yes, it was Black Beauty. <laughs> oh, you jammy son of a gun. Jammy. You are jammy. Okay, here we go. Number nine. Which author created the character Sam Spade? Marlowe. No. Okay. Somebody called... Now, this is one of those ones where it's spelt Dashiel, but I think it'll be DL or something like that. Hammett. Oh, fair enough, yeah. yeah. No, I, th- I was thinking of... Um, if you got yeah. that, let us know in the comments. <laughs> if you even had a, yeah, a fair play to faint you. idea that it was that. Okay, and the last question. What colour is the middle vertical band on the Irish flag? White. Yeah. Well done. It seemed obvious, but I had to... Uh, that's dig me. deep, dig, dig deep. deep. Okay, so after that, really easy. Well, there was one there. I, there's only one that I'm kicking myself on, and that's Paula Radcliffe. Yeah. The other ones. Well, you only got two wrong, I think. Let's check. So you got uh, Ben Nevis. One. Didn't get Paula Radcliffe. No. You got the bats. Two. You've got bats in your belfry. Okay, uh, you got bank manager. Three. You got Barbie. Four. You got Pegasus. Five. You got the home service. Six. You got Black Beauty. Seven. And you got White. Eight. Eight. Out I mean, it should. Ten. And that is scary because it should. It should have been nine because Paula Radcliffe. I, yeah. I, I'm happy with eight. It just goes to show, doesn't it, that it just depends on the day. On the day. And of course, it depends how much you know about the world. Okay, so uh, let's do our little weather and traffic report. So the weather, well, as you can see today, it's glorious. But yesterday, it was grim and it hammered it down with rain pretty much most of the day, didn't it? It did, it did. I mean, it has been changeable. The past Mm. week, I would say, has been a bit up and down. Did a bit of grass cutting a while back and still waiting to finish it off for a a dry day. Yeah, that's true, that's um, true. But no, today, yeah, today's been the best day for a few Mm. days. Lovely today. There's a little bit of a breeze, but not too much. The sun's lovely and warm, and it's everywhere green and blue skies and blue seas. So, yes, it's a fantastic place to be today. Uh, In terms of the traffic and the road situation, it has been generally not too bad. Tourists are uh, are coming in a bit more thick and fast now. Uh, They mainly come in by the liners. The other day we had four liners in, Mm. didn't we? Four liners. I think 20, was it 24,000? No, not 24,000. Two and a half thousand? Yeah, about four and a half thousand passengers Mm. in one day came into the islands. And that is pretty much the population of Kirkhall. Mm maybe slightly under so um yeah it's, it's a massive amount of extra people on the islands compared to normal especially for Kirkwall. yeah but it doesn't really affect us too badly um in south ronald say not too many of the the tourists get down this far or not that many of them 
Well, not at the moment because the pentalina is not running. Exactly. Um, normally we get more. And sometimes there's uh, even coaches come down here because uh, I think sometimes on the cruise ships they'll organise coach trips to various places. And we are the third biggest third biggest settlement on the island. So, That's yeah. true. Yeah. And we've got some nice things here in the village. We've got our little blacksmith's museum. We've got the uh, the Hoxha Tapestry Gallery. That um, sounds all right. Yep. We've got the workshop loft and gallery uh, that's part of the knitwear trail, I think it's called, or something like that. That's or the true. craft trail, sorry. Mm. Knitwear trail. <laughs> craft trail. And as far as the uh, the traffic you were talking about? Yeah, they've got some temporary traffic lights in Finstown ah. at the moment. Yeah, and it's the major route between Stromness and um, Kirkwall. So I think it's causing a few delays there, but nothing that people from the mainland wouldn't be unused to. Someone was saying though that the maximum delays can be like fifteen minutes or something like that. Yeah, I think it's it has to. I think it's a three way light. So at, uh, at rush hours, yeah, it will take a bit of time to to get through. Okay, so obviously, just remember to do the usual: like, subscribe, yeah, tell your friends, share it, um, leave us a lovely comment. Yeah, comments would be great. Or just a comment. Any comment, just as long as it's a nice comment, obviously. You could leave us a question. You could leave us a, a comment about the quiz if you did better than Odin here. Nobody would have done better than that score. That was a, a good score. That was a very good score, to be fair. Yeah. Have a good week. Take it easy, guys. All right, bye. Bye.